please welcome Mr. M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Hey, guys. I like the music. I like that. <laughs> mm, that's a cello I actually played through, like, kind of like through a, an electric. A thing oh, that's really it, cool, yeah. it sound like a growl. That's, oh, really? That's music split. from Split, yeah. Yeah, this was, uh, hang on, wait. Yeah, yeah now you can that. hear it. Yeah, and the composer actually plays the cello. He played it himself, like in a bathroom, like off the tiles. And you can anyway. Who was the composer? <laughs> no, no, no. Wes, Wes Dortson. I got him from the HBO show The Jinx. You know, making yes. So just an amazing talent. Um, I want to uh, talk about, mm-hmm. uh, ask you about Split. Um, and so I don't want no spoiler alerts, but I, I recently went to a screening of um, Unbreakable. Do you look at Unbreakable differently than you did uh, ten years ago? Split and Unbreakable are, are very, very connected, and they've always been. Um, uh, even when I wrote wrote the original uh, movie, these both these movies were, were in my head and actually on paper. Okay. Um, so it, it was just one of those things when I started doing smaller movies, um, which give me all, you know, a lot of creative control. And, and for me, whether it's even just in my own head, a sense of being able to be daring and different and original and, and not worry because the budgets are low and I can do something that's unexpected. I felt like, wow, I could do this other part of the story in a very unusual way. In fact, in a way that hasn't been done before, which is not even tell you how it's connected to something else unless you come see the movie and then forbid it to be mentioned in the marketing. It was really strange, I'll tell you, because you know I write uh, only originals, but this is the first time I've ever written something where I already knew the characters, so it was very bizarre. Like, as soon as I started writing, I knew all the characters' voices and how they were going to react. It was a very different process. And, okay. Yeah, I, I, really interesting. Well, speaking was, of that, I, I apologize, but how did you come up with all the different voices and characters for the one character <laughs> in Split? Yeah, James plays, uh, um, if you guys haven't seen it, Split is about um, uh, James's character and who suffers from DID, and he has 23 personalities, and uh, there's a 24th one coming, which is a very threatening personality. Um, and in this, in this movie, he plays... I, I don't want to tell you how much because I think it's going to be fun, <laughs> but it's, it's an enormous number. But that, that, I mean, that's crazy to have to come up with 23 characters it's, for it, one. You know really, it's not any different for me as a screenwriter because, no. you know, they are who they are, mm-hmm. you know, so. They're real characters. They're, real they're just characters. being funneled through one person. Yeah, it's J- James that has the problem, you know. I, well, I, I have to, I'm just writing different characters. Um, I, I watched the, uh, the Blu-ray had a, a different ending. Mm-hmm. Which I found, I find this stuff fascinating. Yeah. And one you you didn't go with, and it was the exact right call to go with the one you yeah. went with. But um, do do you uh, when you shoot those things, and you actually just sit there and see them side by side and run them? Do you go, that's it, or do you do? Are you back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? Well, I mean, part of art is listening, listening. Right? Yeah. So you can have an agenda. Again, if I write you this movie about you guys, you five guys, right here in this thing, I can have an agenda. Oh, I want Preston to be this person and that person, and you know, but you have to really listen because the character of Preston or the character of Kathy will start talking to you and tell you, telling you something. And if you're being arrogant in the process, it's a, it's literally in a relationship. And if you're, if you're, if you're not listening to say, Oh wow, the Kathy character wants to be the dominant character. It doesn't want to be the way you were thinking of her. And so it's listening to it and, and making the movie and looking at it, you go, wow, I, I thought James's character was going to do this. Or I thought Bruce's character was going to go this way. But actually, it's Sam's character that wants to do this, and that process of I've gotten better at listening. You just step, you sort of step aside and let the voices come. I know it, it seems yeah. very yeah, um, it's all bizarre, sounds really, yeah, bizarre. And, and overly artsy. But I would understand that when you're writing for multiple characters, I mean, they're all living within you. Yeah. So James, we were doing a scene, and and just a, a random moment, just to give you a sense of what I'm talking about. And James was playing the the nine year old boy. And he did something that he didn't know he was going to do. He was walking down the street and he did something with something on the side of the building. And, he, he, you know, a, a half second before he did it, he didn't know he was going to do that. Right. Right. And, and then he did it and then he reacted to it and like a nine-year-old. And it was hilarious and wonderful, but he didn't pre-think that. He was, he was being the character and listening, basically, is what I'm saying. What does the character think? Oh, wow, the character's eyes went to this thing that yeah. happened to walk by. And that, in that same way, being present as, you know, having empathy. I guess as an artist, that's really what you're, you're cultivating is your ability to have empathy. But I've always, you know, coveted the opportunity to do something where there was a pre-existing mythology and and something so well thought out. Why why Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and all the, and even Star Wars, Lucas's Star Wars. You have, why it's so effective is the the backstory has been thought out so much. The backstory is the front story. It's mm. and and it, all that work has been done. And when you guys see something on television or a movie that rings a little hollow, that's because it, the person walked in the room and that person didn't exist before they walked into the room. So, 
So with wow. that kind of just leaving things, th just letting it funnel through, can we expect to see Glass face off against Stuart Little? <laughs> Maybe? Maybe. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. I, I wrote Stuart Little for you fans out there. That's why, why that joke actually is funny. Um, I, I'd like to thank you. Um, I'm a new member of the board of directors of the Greater Philadelphia Film Office. I work for Sharon oh, Pinkerton great. now. So uh, I, I, I came on board this year, and now I've been brought into the fold of all things film and television yeah. in Philadelphia. Uh, what she does is amazing, but um, it's people like you that still highlight this area as a a um, a place to film, a place to create, a place a place that's got wonderful landscapes and backgrounds and all that stuff, and 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 trying to you know to keep that coming into the area. Yeah, I love it. I mean, obviously, we we like we shot a scene um, with Bruce down in South Philly, and we were in this house, this, uh, this row home, and we came out, and there's two thousand people outside. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like bringing us cheesesteaks <laughs> and pizzas. And by the way, I ate it all. So yeah. It was it was so. Good. I mean, I'm you know I'm a Philly boy. I mean, you know I'm I'm a classic Philly boy. You know, it's October. We're gonna win the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. M Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Guys. Thank you guys. Thanks, man.